welcome to Resilience Unraveled, featuring scientists, practitioners, experts and everyday people with knowledge, tips, experience and great stories to share to help you get a grip of your life. We'll give you insights into a range of subjects, including reducing your stress, improving your emotional intelligence, health and well-being, and controlling your negative thoughts. By doing this, you'll be able to improve your resilience, confidence, control, and perform better every day to live a more productive and purposeful life. For a free resilience ebook, listen through to the end for details. Here's your host, Dr. Russell Thackeray. So today is something a little bit different. In fact, um, I was running a coaching session quite recently with um, a colleague of mine, and he and I got on, got onto the subject of holidays, and he immediately started sort of foaming at the mouth, ripping his hair out, jumping up and down, telling me that holidays were, were for him one of the most stressful things he had in his calendar. In fact, he, he sort of was saying that actually he needed a holiday after a holiday to be able to recover from the holiday. And um, it struck me that might be quite useful just to put together two or three tips to help people really make the most of their holidays. And so that's what this short podcast is all about. I know it seems blindingly obvious, but it, um, holidays are so important, I think, that it's actually make, it's worth just spending a, a few minutes just having a think about making sure if you're on holiday at the moment that you're making the most of yours. If you're planning a holiday, that you don't make all the same old mistakes. And if you're coming back from a holiday, you can sort of think to yourself, well, I won't make some of those things, you know, some of those mistakes again. If you've got any other ideas, feel free to drop them on our LinkedIn page or um, Facebook groups or anything else. Uh, always interested in your um, your views. And I think really for the purpose of this podcast, I'd just like to co- co- sort of cover three broad tips. The sort of before where you put your attention, and how you think about difference. So there's sort of three broad areas. And so the first thing to think about is before. I think for a lot of people, they put themselves, remember that all pressure is internal, they put themselves under pressure by saying, this holiday has to be perfect. It's the one and only chance I get a year to have a holiday, so therefore it's got to be the best holiday ever. It's got to be great all the time. Um, everyone's got to be cheerful all the time. If they've got kids, they've got to be happy, shiny, clappy, perfect all the time. And I think one of the cha- challenges for us, therefore, is we begin this problem of actually setting up a holiday to fail by having over-perfectionistic views of it. Remember, as holidays, just two weeks in a different place. Now, is the op- there is an opportunity to be able to build some thrive time for yourself in a holiday, but it's not meant to be a perfect thing. If you're down, if you're miserable, if, you ha- if your relationships are a bit rocky, it's the chance to re to re to reinvestigate your um, relationship. But fundamentally, holidays don't fix things. In fact, if you don't think about holidays right, they can actually highlight things which are wrong. So please don't think that holidays are the cure-all or meant to be a perfect thing. Don't think that when you come back from a holiday, everything will be better. You'll be better and work will be better and life will be better. So take that pressure off yourself. Think about your own mindset when you're going on holiday. It's just going to be two weeks in a different place. And one of the key things about these two weeks is that you're not pressurised about work. You really need to make sure that when you're on holiday, you're not thinking about work. It never fails to amaze me that um, people have holidays and they sort of resent them because they get in the way of work. This is often people who work in large organisations who, if they left two weeks after they have gone, the organisation would have forgotten who they were. So you you know, sort of need to get a grip of yourself here on holidays. That for you, the, the, the organisation you work for will get an, you know, an intended consequence of your increased performance when you get back if you've actually had a break. But for a lot of people, what they do is they work 53 million times harder in the, in the two or three weeks leading up to a holiday, which means actually their stress levels build. And that actually has a negative effect on the enzymes in your stomach, and actually creates a stress-related illness. So when you get on holiday, the first thing that happens to you is you're ill. Now, if that's happening to you, that's a sign that your, your your body's out of Uh, out of alignment really and that you're not looking after your own body in the run-up to a holiday so it's something you need to get a grip on and you need to work out that is stomach related so make sure you're having plenty of probiotics and you're having a good diet especially at the beginning of a holiday and if you come down with a cough or a cold or a bit of a tummy ache just give into it and remember it's there to protect you so allow yourself to be a little bit wimpy and a little bit sorry for yourself and then you'll get over it faster 
So one of the key things about going on holiday is you do want to clear the workload, but not to kill yourself doing it. Remember that you want to go on holiday with all the sort of big um, atom bombs fixed, but the minor irritations parked or put to one side or delegated or whatever it is you do to you know get a grip of that, depending on the sort of size of organisation you're in. And that will allow you to you know forget about things. You need to get a grip of work when you're on your holiday. Remember, you're being paid for being on holiday. So you can see that actually renewing, regenerating yourself is part of your work. Not work life, but work. It's a time invested in you by your employer to make sure that you can renew yourself. So it makes sense that when you're on holiday, that where you put your attention is really important. And a lot of people spend a lot of time on holiday uh, ruminating about the past or wondering about the future and such sometime. And actually, whilst it is a good chance to do some planning, it's also a really good point to be able to really enjoy where you are and what you're doing. So if you're going to spend some time for yourself, really invest in yourself. If you're going to spend time with your significant other or your kids, really enjoy doing that. Be present at the time you're doing things. So if you've got kids in the swimming pool, make sure you're in the swimming pool doing swimming with the kids. And also it's a chance to sort of lighten up as well, to have some fun with people. You know, you don't have to be at work when you're on holiday. So dump that work persona and be yourself. Sometimes relationships can reconnect with the sort of sense of fun and joy and engagement that you'd had years ago because you can be that person again. So be yourself, be present, be in the moment. And one of the biggest things I can help suggest that you do when you're on holiday is to read fiction. I'm one of those people that loves to read non-fiction. I do like a, a nice and meaty journal or something equally boring and tedious. But I got into reading fiction. And actually, I was looking at some work by Sam Harris, who's um, one of those guys who's really into the sort of neuroscience of uh, attention and such like. And what he says is that the best way to relax your brain is that is it to really sort of engage at a very deep level with something, to be able to screen out distractions it's the equivalent of sort of mindfulness in a funny sort of way but that actually one of the fastest ways to do that is to read a really good gripping book and actually getting sort of lost in um you know a really good thriller or crime or romantic comedy or whatever it is that you like is very good because your brain begins to park and it begins to really relax whilst you're just sort of thoroughly enjoying sort of being involved in something that's something is um, quite so engrossing and books or fiction books are more useful than say television because of course what's happening is your imagination is being stimulated by the words and the concepts and the good writing and the good thing with a piece of fiction is if it's rubbish in the first 15 20 pages put it down and find something else and you know read something that you know you're going to enjoy and again don't sort of save something up and then get dis disappointed with it read something two or three things so you know that you've got plenty to engage yourself so read some fiction and enjoy yourself be in the moment and recognize that sometimes on holidays it's a bit of a compromise so sometimes what you have to do is to say well actually i want to spend some time on my own but here's the deal if i do this you can do this for me and often you'll find that you want to spend time for yourself, but your other per the, the other people in the relationship might want to spend time for each other on their on their selves as well. So you have to compromise, and you have to work out and figure out where you spend your time. So if you have kids, you go and spend some time with the kids, and leave time for your partner to um, spend time for themselves. So you know, cut and paste and compromise as much as you can, so everybody gets what they need. Remember, it's everybody's holiday. You might be the, being the most heroic because actually you're the person who's at work, but maybe um, the kids, of course, work as well. So it's important for them to be able to um, have time on their own as children, as well as it is for them to have kids time um, with you. Remember, you know, the kids clubs are great. Uh, I know that um, lots of adults will put kids in kids clubs because actually they you know, don't want them to you know, want them in their sight. But remember that kids are naturally sociable and it's good for kids to actually experience different children and um, different age groups and different cultures. And and to, den to deny them that, it's more about yourself and your own parenting rather than it is about them and what they need for social interaction. So think that through. Get the chance to have some time for you all to have your own stuff. So that's about detention. And the, and the third thing is really just to think about difference. I mean, recognise, particularly when you go abroad, 
that you're going to a different place, that you're going to a different country, that you're the foreigner there. Um, and actually, it's really good for you to spend time in the rhythms of the place you go. Now, I'm particularly struck when you see, so for example, people from the UK or America in places like Spain or South America, and they sort of um, maintain their own rhythms, they keep their own food, they eat the way they, or they operate the way they would that if they were in their own home. Well, if you're going to want to stay in your own home, why don't you just stay there? And so I've noticed, um, for example, years ago on a cruise ship that um, the Americans used to eat six, the Brits used to eat at eight, and the South Americans used to come out at 10 o'clock to start eating. And actually the cruise ships used to have to really sort of um, strive to accommodate those different things. So if you go abroad, play to the different rhythms. Why not eat late? Why not eat at 10 o'clock? I mean, you're not getting up for work the next day. You're not doing anything else. You're just on holiday, aren't you? So why not adapt to the rhythms of where you are? And the key thing about adapting to those rhythms is to start to do things differently. It's really good for your brain to do different things. It is really good for your brain to eat different food. I mean, someone once said to me, if you're going to order a meal, always have one unusual side dish. The worst that can happen is you'll, um, you'll love it and you might want more. Or do you know what? You might not like it. It's just been a side dish. No one's really lost too much money. So it's something to, to bear in mind that you need to really think about that. Really think about what am I doing that's different on my holiday? How am I settling in? How am I sort of feeling the vibe of the place and moving at the rhythm of the place? And you, you'll notice as well, if you come from a sort of an Anglo-Saxon sort of type culture, if you, and you go to the Mediterranean countries or South America, the rhythm of life's just slower. This idea of manana in Spain, for example, means tomorrow, yes, but it, mean, it means spiritually tomorrow. That means actually there's nothing that can happen today that couldn't be put off. And that's an interesting way to think about life. Now, when I first arrive in, say, Spain or something like that, I, you know, I'm ripping my hair out on the road with, you know, screaming with stress and such like. And it takes me a little while to actually sink into the rhythm of it. And when I do, I relax and I'm then on holiday. So you have to recognize there is a transition between what you're used to and where you're going. And that's important because no one switches into holiday mode straight away. And actually, it's unrealistic to believe that. And the way that often people attempt to do that is to get absolutely wrecked using alcohol on the flights out. So please avoid that if you possibly can. And one of the last things I often think about doing is on holiday, which certainly works for me and I know for a lot of other people. And this is quite peculiar, isn't it? Because I spend a lot of my life socialising and talking to people. And, there's, and as an introvert, there's nothing I like better than actually spending time on my own. And I need to do a piece of that on holiday. But there's nothing more interesting than just chatting to people in the in the queue learning a little bit of language and just attempting to use it from time to time it's funny it's quite it shows your limitations it's good for you to learn something but it's actually really great and if you've got kids you'll recognize actually how much better they are that sort of plasticity of their brains is is amazing to see um but you'll just find it's very interesting just to talk to people in the queues of supermarkets. It's quite amazing who you bump into, who you end up chatting to. And it might mean nothing, it might mean something. And um, I just think it's this idea of seizing the moment to do something different when you're on holiday. Remembering time for yourself, but also remembering that this opportunity just to chat is very, very good for your brain. Park it and, um, you know, meet someone different and just chat to someone different. And especially if you're traveling in a large party, sometimes... Chatting to people outside of that group can be very useful for you. So to summarise then, just um, as we're chatting away, um, think about what you do beforehand. Think about where you put your attention, being in the now rather than spending too much time in the past or future. And, you know, celebrating the difference and the rhythm of where you are. There is no doubt that a good holiday is worth its weight in gold. You're being paid for being on holiday. So do you know what? One of the best holiday you can at the moment. But remember... It's not meant to be the perfect holiday. There's plenty more to come. And until the next one, have a great time. We hope you found today's podcast useful. If you did, why not subscribe and listen to our other podcasts? We would love it if you could leave us a review. To access our resilience coaching, contact us at info at qedod.com. And finally, if you'd like to download our free resilience ebook, go to qedod.com slash free ebook. Thanks for listening.